When Fifty Shades of Grey first hit the publishing world, E.L. James thought maybe she'd sell a few thousand copies. Fast forward eight years and 150 million copies later, what began as her online musings has now morphed into a billion-dollar entertainment franchise. James is back, this time leaving Christian Grey and Anastasia Steele behind and introducing fans to <laughs> the mister. E.L. James is in studio with us this morning. Erica, good to have you here with us. Oh, if people Hi. only knew what happens behind <laughs> the scenes. <laughs> Hello, thank you for having me. Yeah, so good to have you here in person. Hey, listen, uh, what is it like to write your next novel after this massive success of Fifty Shades of Grey? Not just a book. You've got movies. You've got licensing deals. Tell me about the pressures of coming out with a new novel, different characters. It is. It, there's, a, there's a huge amount of pressure, but I, I wrote Fifty Shades for myself. Um, fundamentally, and, and I've done exactly the same with this. I've, I wrote the story that I wanted to read, and I think that's, if, if for any budding writers out there, just write what you want to read. It's a very different world from that of Christian Grey and, and Azatasia. What is happening in your life that you went from wanting to write what you wanted to read then to wanting to write The Mister? Well, it's interesting, because I actually started this book in 2009. Hmm. I wrote a rough draft of it then, and uh, it's taken about three or four, three or four goes to get this to where it needed to be. Um, so I've had these people in my head before Christian and Anna. Um, so um, I'm, I'm glad that I've finally got their passionate love story onto the page. Uh, this is set in London. Yes. You, the city of London, the entire UK, is going through a very tumultuous period right now. We've yes. got you know, Theresa May stepping down. You are not shy about your opinions on Brexit. No, I think the Brexit is a really bad idea. This book deals with some political themes it of does. sex trafficking, of the plight of undocumented workers. Absolutely. Um, have you had any feedback about, you know, romanticizing perhaps those very serious issues? I don't happening? think they're romanticized in any way whatsoever. I think that that's the, that's the reality that this young woman finds herself in. And it's, and it's good to write about. It's interesting. I read a thing saying, oh, E.L. James doesn't address these, these, uh, this in the book. The fact is, this is what, what, what happens to this woman. And this person is now writing about it this particular person who was talking about it. So they're, they're addressing it, which is, which is exactly how it should be. I'm, I'm here just to, to paint a picture of, of somebody's life. Um, and uh, it's, it's not, it is not a romantic life. Fortunately, she meets somebody with, with, with whom that, um, she can have a, a, a wonderful, passionate affair. Uh, you do a lot of research when you're painting that picture yes. of your characters. And for this one, you traveled to Albania, which I is did. where the I female did. character's from. I, that's I, when I said I, I had to, I kept going back to try and rewrite this. And I realized that, that I didn't know Alessia well enough. And I had to go to Albania to get a really, really good picture of her. Um, and I had a fantastic time. Uh, my husband and I went last uh, March 2018. And once I'd been to her city and her town, I was able to get a really, really clear picture in my, head, in my head of what she's like. In the book, you describe her town as having very, what we would call outdated views of, of roles for men and women. There's not, women are, are seen and not heard. Absolutely. Would you say, was that drawn from your experience Absolutely, there? Absolutely, yes. I mean, it's, it's, it's extraordinary that, that even in, in when it was quite cool, it's the men who are in the coffee shops and uh, enjoying, their, enjoying their coffee and what have you. You're thinking, where are the women? Where are the women? Hmm. Um, and eventually, we had some fast food well, Albanian fast food, which was delicious and kind of cooked from scratch. And the women were behind the counter serving all the food, and it was delicious. Uh, at the time when this book comes out, although you say you started writing in 2009, you are releasing this book uh, in a sort of post-Me Too, Time's Up era. Was that a consideration for you when you were, when you were releasing well, the novel? I think, I think this is the story that I want to tell. Of course, I mean, it's, 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 uh, that, was in, that was in the back of my mind. Um, and it's, it's uh, in, and, you know, it's a, an incredibly important thing to have, have begun, and, and it's, it still has a long way to go, as we all know. Um, there's, I wanted to ask you this question. Who are you writing your books for? Are they just for you? Are they for a male audience? Are they for a certain female audience? Oh, my God, audience? they're just for me. They are just for me, and, and women, hopefully, will read this. I get very embarrassed when I hear about men reading it. And it's, it, I just do, I just do. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a female thing, it's a female bonding thing. I've read some I of think. the chapters. It kind of seems like a step-by-step -step of you want things to go well, just follow uh, along. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> you do. <laughs> Definitely. Erica, great to have you here in studio. Thanks for thank coming. You for, thank you for having me.